Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, April 4th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, who would have thought uh, we got another sort of supply chain issue uh, today? Now, the day started with a fairly straightforward, simple blog post. It's beginning of April here in the United States. April 15th is the big tax deadline. So I figured it may be a good idea to remind people about some of the security issues around filing your taxes. But this weekend, we also got a note from one of our readers true about efile.com kind of behaving oddly displaying pop-ups and offering browser updates to download so after posting my initial diary i spent a little bit of time on efile.com and well a big surprise i discovered what looks like a possible supply chain issue again So just a little bit about efile.com. This website is apparently authorized by the IRS to offer e-filing services. So you can fill out your tax information on the site and they'll transmit the information to the IRS. This would make you believe that they are very worried about security. But apparently what I'm describing started around March 17th, so about two weeks ago. The root cause is that one of the JavaScript files on the site apparently got compromised. The name of the file is popper.js. It's served via Conda Liver Network, but one that's apparently uh, used and uh, set up uh, for efile.com. Popper.js is often used with the Bootstrap framework or uh, library. And uh, as the name implies, it's sort of for pop-up notices in order to display them on the site. The problem here is that uh, for whatever reason, two additional lines uh, were added, a couple more lines actually, but uh, two lines are sort of significant were added uh, to the code. One is commented out, the other one is a base64 encoded string that injects additional JavaScript into the page. This JavaScript is loaded from a website called infomain1lyac.online. I'm not sure if I pronounced this quite correctly, but you can see the full domain name and the full URL in the diary. And what this does is it either returns nothing, and that's what happens most of the time. So the site in that case works just normal, but in some instances, and we haven't really quite figured out if that's randomly or if you need to have a certain user agent, JavaScript is being returned that renders an error page that looks just like a normal browser error page. And uh, that page basically tells you that you're using an out of date browser and offers an updated browser for download. The download then being offered is, well, of course, some kind of backdoor, basically some kind of remote access Trojan. And this executable contained a valid signature from a tech company in Sichuan. Apparently that certificate or that uh, private key was stolen and used to sign this binary, but so the user would not receive any additional warnings because uh, this is a perfectly fine and valid signed uh, binary. In addition, antivirus engines, uh, at least the uh, last time I checked this afternoon, pretty much ignored uh, this particular uh, binary. There were only uh, two antivirus engines that actually flagged it. Uh, one was uh, CrowdStrike Falcon, and the other one was Signet. Now, a couple of things happened uh, since then. The certificate may have been revoked uh, by now. Also, Antivirus engines hopefully are catching up uh, to the idea that this particular uh, binary, possibly also that uh, JavaScript site uh, is malicious. However, one thing that has not happened yet is any kind of response from efile.com. Uh, we n- tried to notify them via the customer uh, support. And I know Brian Krebs, I think, tried to call them about this particular issue. But uh, as I am recording this, and it's now almost uh, 9 uh, p.m. here, 
Near Eastern uh, time. Uh, the malicious JavaScript is still in popper.js and uh, no response so far from efile.com. So anybody filing their taxes uh, with their website, who knows what else is going on uh, with that particular website. So what should you do? Well, uh, definitely don't file your taxes right now with efile.com. Also, if you are using Bootstrap and you do have popper.js uh, on your website, double check it, uh, give it a quick look. Uh, it's pretty obvious that Base64 encoded a piece of code at the beginning of the file. So uh, it's not really hard to spot that something odd is going on here. They could have uh, been much better in hiding the code. Double check it, just make sure we have no idea how this code ended up there. If they downloaded it from an odd source or if a developer system was compromised, similar uh, to uh, the 3CX issue, no real idea how the malicious code ended up uh, on the site. We just know it's still there. Additional URLs and such that are being used as part of the download chain, you can look at them uh, in the Internet Storm Center uh, diary that I put together. So if you need any kind of indicators of compromise in case one of your users uh, went uh, to efile.com to file their tax. And if there are any updates, well, I'll update the diary tomorrow. Well, but maybe you didn't use efile.com and use some other provider to file your taxes, but then stored your tax return data on a MyCloud backup account. Well, it turns out that Western Digital's MyCloud service was compromised. They noticed this about a week ago and as a result, they now shut down temporarily the MyCloud service to further investigate what exactly happened. They haven't stated yet that any MyCloud or user data was uh, compromised as part of the attack, but they did say that some of the company's own data was uh, compromised. Let me have a small update to 3CX. And the main issue here is that apparently some crypto coin exchanges did notice that they were backdoored as a result of this compromise. So they were 3CX customers that did have the respective desktop client running. And apparently some of the more targeted attacks that sort of followed the initial compromise were directed at crypto coin exchanges. And that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Hope you neither use 3CX, efile.com or MyCloud, then you'll probably have a wonderful Tuesday. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.